Souls RNG runs pretty smoothly for most players as they simply AFK and try to get the best aura as possible. But for some of us who like to actually explore the game further, there are actually many bugs and glitches which exist in Souls RNG. And somehow, they've still not been patched. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some of the best glitches which still work, ranging from simply changing the color of your gauntlets to completely breaking the daily quest system with this reward duplication glitch. But just before we get to that, I'm doing a massive giveaway of 50,000 Robux when we reach 400,000 subscribers. This giveaway is only for my subscribers, so make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you'd like to potentially win yourself an insane amount of Robux. Also, you'll get the badge look if you subscribe as well. And we're in. We all know that in Souls RNG, the game is pretty simple. You just stand around like this, you press your roll button, and you wait and see what happens. But it's not really the perfect game. As you guys probably know by now, the other day, I managed to find an OP glitch where you can actually get infinite heavenly potions. And then I thought to myself, well, what else is still broken in Souls RNG? And what can we toy around with as players in order to break this game even more? So that's exactly what we're going to be going through today. Today, I have a total of 11 bugs and glitches that we're going to go through. Some of these are completely game breaking and some of them, well, they're just kind of fun and change the avatars a little bit. So let's start with one of the fun ones that's not going to completely break Souls RG and probably get me banned. Kicking off with the first trick, what you're going to need is get your gloves on like this. And for this trick to work, you actually need a Tide Gauntlet. Now, I'm not going to lie, I actually found this fully by accident as soon as I got my Tide Gauntlet. And that's because I managed to pull a chromatic whilst just AFKing with it. But anyway, that doesn't matter. What we're going to be doing with this glove is just changing the color of it. Now, I bet you're thinking, wait, but how do you do that? Well, all you have to do is go into storage, click your chromatic, go equip, Okay, and as you can see, now this glove right here is blinking in different colors in time with the chromatic aura. And if I zoom really close in, you see these waves? You see how they're changing colors as they're coming out? Well, we can actually switch auras now. So let me go to Glock and let's try pause it on a cool color. So let's try go for like pink. Oh, I think I completely messed it up. All right, attempt number two. Let's try get pink here. Ah! What did I get? Did I just get blue again? <laughs> Look, if we zoom in, you can see it's like a bluey, purpley wave. But wait, I can get it better. Let's get it to an actual different color. Okay, let's go chromatic again, please. Here we go. Uh, Anything but blue. Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. As you can see, I've now turned the glove yellow. This trick should be really easy to do. I just messed it up a bunch of times. But yeah, anyway, you can change it to any color that you like that's in the chromatic aura. And for some reason, it's actually bugged out the waves as well. Okay, I didn't know that was a thing. So the waves are going super slowly on the glove now, dude. That looks so cursed. Okay, let's change it to another color and then we'll move on to the next glitch. So let me try and get it to like a pink or red. Did I get it? I think I did. Oh, there we go. Okay, now we've made the glove pink. That looks epic. And that's it. It's as simple as that. As long as you have the Tide Gauntlet and you have the Chromatic Aura, you can easily change the color of it. Dude, that actually looks epic at night. Look at that. Moving on to trick number two. This one is actually to do with the Volcanic Device. So let's equip that one. And actually, let me get my Blessed Tide Gauntlet back on, even though it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm going to quickly change the color of my Tide Gauntlet again. Okay, there we go. I'll put it back on the pink one. And for this trick, as you can see, the Chromatic didn't change the color of the Volcanic Glove but we can actually change the color of the flames. Now, this glitch has actually been in the game for like two eras now, so I'm sure you guys have probably already seen it or have managed to find it yourself. But all they have to do to change the volcanic glove is, as you can see, it's red right now. If we go into storage and you happen to have a twilight aura, all you got to do is equip twilight. You can now see that changes the flame to like this purple whitey color. And then if you change to a different aura once again, so let's go back to Glock. Yep, that's right. It will stay as that kind of like purple white color. And as you can see it has actually changed the color of my tide gauntlet as well to that same color so the twilight does actually affect the tide gauntlet as well but chromatic doesn't affect the volcanic glove so that's why these two are separate glitches and now that we've changed the color of the gloves why don't we actually try to change the color of an aura for this i'm gonna have to leave my account because i actually need to log into an account which has the oblivion aura now not many of you are going to be able to do this trick because there's only like six oblivion auras but let's go break souls rng even more by using the new oblivion aura we're back and we're now on Lucas's account. If you guys don't know who Lucas is, by the way, he was the very first Oblivion Aura owner 
owner in the world. But anyway, that doesn't matter today. Let me show you a glitch that you can actually do with the Oblivion Aura. So what you want to do is go to your Oblivion. If you actually have one of these, you want to, of course, equip it. Now, first of all, the Oblivion Aura is pretty epic. We all know that. But if you want to make this aura even bigger and even more broken, there is actually something you can do. Now, let me first actually change it off the snow biome just so we can see it easier. So let's go strange controller. Oh, no, it's on cooldown. Okay, it's fine. We'll do it in the snow biome. So what you want to do is come to this little lake right here. I mean, you can do it anywhere, but yeah. You just want to basically do that so it resets your character. But as you're falling down, you actually want to press your ultimate and then change it to a different aura. So let's just say, for example, we want to go Archangel. All right, so want to jump down, press X to use the ultimate, switch to Archangel. And now when you come back, <laughs> you'll actually have this purple aura all around you. And yeah, you can just wear any aura whilst this is going on. So it looks pretty good with Archangel. But let's see, what would it look like with Abyss Hunter? Wait, that actually looks sick. The blue and the purple. That looks so nuts. And by the way, look how massive it is now. Look how much it flares out. It goes crazy. This is officially the biggest aura in the game. The funny part is you can do it with anything. So I can put quartz on right now. <laughs> look at this. You can fly around like this with this massive aura around you whilst you're just simply wearing quartz. And I'm pretty sure you can actually stack this as well. So let me see. If I go to Oblivion. Okay, let's actually keep trying to stack it. So will this work? Um, Let's switch to a chromatic here. Okay. Let's jump down, press X, switch to a chromatic. Wait, that's even more insane. Okay, if you switch to a chromatic, it actually keeps flashing colors. I didn't even know you could do that. What? <laughs> what is this? And look how big it is now as well, by the way. It got even bigger. This is insane. Wait, let's do it one more time. Dude, look, I've equipped Oblivion and look how massive it is. <laughs> It's so big. Okay, I've got to wait for the cooldown on the right. Okay, let me try the chromatic again, because honestly, that looks so cool. The fact that it was changing colors. All right, here we go. Let's jump down, press X, go chromatic. Ah! Oh! <laughs> it's even bigger. This is insane. This should not be in the game. I honestly, I cannot zoom out any further. It's so big. Okay, wait, let me get my Glock on. We've got it stuck on one color. We've got it stuck on yellow. Where am I? Okay, I'm in here. Hi, guys. <laughs> How is this a thing in the game? How has this not been patched? I have no idea. But if you guys happen to have a memory or Oblivion Aura, sorry, you can actually just keep doing this on repeat and make it massive. So now that it's yellow, if I equip Oblivion again, ooh, that looks pretty cool. The yellow and the purple, I like that. But anyway, that is the glitch you can do with Oblivion. So if you do happen to have one, try it out for yourself. Go troll some people with this absolutely insanely massive aura you can make. Now let me go back to my own accounts because honestly, I think I have broke Lucas his private server even if i try reset character yeah it's just stuck like this i'm sorry lucas I'm back onto my own accounts, and I've got to say, it's nice to be back in the blue suit. But anyway, if you guys saw my video the other day, I actually posted a video where you can get infinite heavenly one potions, and that was by spamming the daily quests, and basically just bugging them out with the constant rerolls, and you were just able to get infinite null biome quests, which means infinite heavenly one potions. So for example, you would go onto your null biome quest like this, but before you claimed it, you would go reroll quest, and then you would click claim, and then click reroll. So if I show you, it used to work like this, you used to be able to go claim, and then reroll, but... Yep, I've just wasted 10 Robux. So clearly that doesn't work anymore. But the other day, completely by accident, I actually found another new bug to do with the daily quest, which means you can actually get more than one no biome quest once again. Now, unfortunately, I do have two quests completed already here today, so I won't be able to replicate it. But I can show you the clip where I accidentally got a double quest twice, and you can actually replicate this as well. I did it yesterday, but I forgot to record it. So let's go into that clip and let me explain what happens. So as you can see, see here i pull up my daily quests and i actually have all of my daily quests complete now i didn't want the snow by one because i was trying to get the no biome daily quest so i re-rolled it i re-rolled it again and now when i get to the re-roll with the actual robux this is where it gets weird because my other two quests are completed yep that's right look at that I got a duplication glitch with the corruption biome. And at the end of the day, when I did actually complete this biome quest, I ended up getting two rewards for it that were exactly the same. So that means if that was with the null biome, which I did do yesterday, actually, you can get the heavenly one potion, not just once, but twice in one day, which means a heavenly two potion every single day just from your daily quest. It's definitely not as broken as it used to be, but the fact that you can get two of them instead of one is still pretty insane. So try it out for yourself if you have some spare robux next up we've got an absolutely classic one and yep i have done this plenty of times in the past 
pass, but ever since the Era 8 update, you haven't really been able to get up there. And that, of course, is the big mountain. Now, we can see Lime is chilling back up there since now the summer quest has ended. And I bet some of you guys are wondering, wait, but can we go up to Lime now? Well, yes. Yes, we still can. Now, in order to be able to do this trick now, you can't use the Hyper Vault and Arcane Bug anymore. But what you can do is you can now use the new Shard Surfer Aura in order to jump way higher. Now, Astral's actually made a video on this in the past before, so you can check that out for yourself. But we're going to do it here today. So let's go to Storage. Let's go Surfer. Equip that. All right, did I say Shard Surfer earlier? I meant just Surfer, by the way. And what you want to do is you can see that the Aura does dip down a little bit here. So if we have a look here... You can see how it's dipping down, it's going close to the ground, and then it goes back up. Now, what we need to do is try to get this aura stuck in the ground. And the way that you do that is you just go reset character like this. And you can now see you start in the ground, and when you pop back up, you'll actually now be able to jump higher with this aura. So what you want to do is press S and space or jump at the same time. So you go like that. And as you can see, I can actually jump way higher. Like, look at this. You can jump straight onto Jake's workshop. First of all, you can do that without even doing the backwards jump trick. But even if I wanted to get onto this tree, look how massive it is. You can just do that. It's so easy. So how do we get onto the big mountain using this trick? Well, there are actually two ways. One of them is over here on the right. So if I just come this way, let's go around the corner like this. If you go up against the wall flat, press space. Oh, press S and space, and then you jump. Yeah, you can get pretty easily onto this mountain. It just makes you jump so high. Like, look at this, dude. We're all the way up here, just like that. It's that easy. I actually do wonder, though, can I get up this bit? This bit's really high. If you can get that high, that'd be insane. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's a little bit too high. <laughs> Try to check out for yourself, guys, and let me know, can you get onto that bit there? But anyway, let me get back up here. Let's go Glock. The one thing you do have to watch out for, though, is they've actually put a barrier at the top of the mountain now. So in my previous videos where I went on top of the mountain, I went all the way up there and even to the lake over there. But now I'll show you here quickly. If you jump past this point, it actually resets you. So let me try jump to that bit, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to get reset. Yep. Okay, there it is. So I'll just give you guys a quick tip when it comes to actually doing this trick. You want to reset character when the board goes up to the top. So like when it's around here, that's when you want to reset character. Because if you reset character when the tip is at the top, your character will actually be fully reset going down into the ground. And that's how you'll manage to get the highest jump possible with this aura. So let me just show you quickly. So you want to reset there. So if you go reset character, get it on. Wait for the board to reach the top, like up here, then press reset. I'll show you quickly now. So reset here. You can see I'm fully in the ground. Oh, I'll show that again quickly. I actually couldn't see myself properly. Okay, so reset character. Wait until we get to the top. I'm fully in the ground, and then I pop back up. And you can actually get even onto this bit up here as well. If you get the right hop, you can get all the way up here. Let me see if I can get it. All right, there it is. There's the hop. Okay, so we're going to this part of the mountain. Now we can swap out of the aura. Let's go back into Glock. And yeah, you can go up here as well. But like I said, you actually can't go on top of this bit right here. So I'm pretty sure we can't actually get all the way to Lime. Wait, but I wonder if I can make it around this corner. Could I maybe get to Lime? Let's see. Oh, can I even make this jump, dude? Whoa! Okay, epic jumps. Dude, I don't know. Is this possible? Can I make it over there? How would I do that? Wait, let me try something. <gasps> no way! I can make it here. Dude, wait, that's actually insane. Okay, I didn't think I was going to be able to make it all the way to line, but here we are. Oh, okay, I got teleported back. Well, that actually brings us on to the next trick. And for this glitch, you're going to need to have the Arcane, Arcane Dark, or Arcane Legacy. Just one variation of the Arcane. And of course, we're going to be doing the Flying Arcane Teleport glitch. So first, let me quickly get back on top of the mountain where I just was. So let's go reset character again. Okay, I'm back to the part where I was just at. So what you want to do from here here is you want to hop up onto this bit where I just was. And of course, from here, you won't be able to jump all the way over there. But we can use the arcane teleport glitch. And this has been in the game for so long. If you guys have seen any of my other glitch videos, I've used the arcane teleport glitch for ages now. So how do we actually do this? Well, of course, you want to equip your arcane aura. And we all know if you press X with arcane, it makes you teleport forward. 
But if you actually press F11, it will bring up this bar up here. And what you can do is something called tab glitching. So if I hold right click at the top of this bar here, you'll see it'll freeze my game. Watch. Okay, you see how my game is now frozen? Well, we're actually going to abuse that in order to stop ourselves in midair and keep teleporting across. So of course, we're aiming all the way over there. So we want to make sure that we're pointing in the direction that we want to teleport. Now, all you have to do is jump. And at the very top of your jump, press X to teleport forward. And as soon as you do that, you right click at the top of this bar up here where my mouse is. So this only does work for PC players. I don't think you can do this on mobile. But anyway, let's go jump, teleport, right click to hold. So now we've frozen the game. You want to wait somewhere around six seconds, then let go again. Okay, now that I've let go, we can see I'm pretty much there. And I think I might have actually made it in one teleport. But just to be safe, I'm going to let go and TP again. Okay, there we go. Now I've definitely made it. Okay, I think you can actually do it in one arcane teleport. But the arcane teleport glitch doesn't just work to this spot. It works to many other places. So let's quickly say hello to Lime. And then let's go explore where else we can teleport to. Dude, this is so sick that we can see Lime. All right, well, I've come back down from Lime. And now let's go explore what can we do with the arcane teleport glitch. Well, one of the things you can do is get all the way over there. You see that box in the distance? Yep. I've managed to get there in a previous video. If you guys want to check that out. I'll leave it in the description for you. But be warned to get all the way over there with the arcane teleport glitch. It literally took me four hours. So yeah, it takes quite a while. But here's some more examples of things you can do in the game. You see that massive tree over there? Well, we can easily get over there just by using this glitch. So if we go once again and repeat the same process, teleport, freeze the game. All right, and there we go. Oh, okay. Wait, I might be stuck falling for a second. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sometimes this happens where you're just infinitely stuck falling. All right, well, it turns out you can still use that arcane teleport glitch to be infinitely stuck falling as well. But you get the point. You can get onto this tree. You can get onto that leaderboard over there. You can get absolutely anywhere just by using this trick. I mean, it does look pretty awesome that I'm floating with my memory aura though. <laughs> that actually looks epic. But anyway, let's move on to the next trick. So sticking with the theme of being able to jump higher and being able to teleport around, let's first go through this teleport to meet Stella. All right, now that we're through, we're basically in the Stella cave. And one thing that I'm sure you all know by now is that there is this hole up here. And unfortunately, there's no way to get into this hole. Or is there? Well, you used to be able to use the Sailor Aura to get up there, but the Sailor Aura doesn't actually allow you to jump very high anymore. And the Sailor Flying Dutchman also doesn't allow you to jump high enough. But there is one aura, and I mean only one aura in this game that has maximum height jump that can get up there. And now for this one, you can't use the Shard Surfer because to get in here, you have to teleport and that resets your Shard Surfer. Oh, I keep saying Shard Surfer, I mean Surfer, sorry. But anyway, the aura that you can use is Chromatic Genesis. So if you have this aura, it's a 1 in 99 million rarity, and it does actually allow you to jump super high, like way higher than you think you can go so if you keep spamming jump eventually you'll get pushed up into this little spot all right there we go you see how i teleported up look at that we're in okay so now you can switch back to any aura let's just go glock and as you can see i have come up through that little hole down there that's the stellar cave make sure you don't go too far on this side because there is just a giant pit down here let me change the weather so you can see it better let's go strange controller we've got rainy Okay, we've got Starfall. That's better. So there's a giant pit down there. Don't fall down there. It's very dangerous. And basically up here, you can just walk around and do whatever you like. There's not that much to do up here, but it is a super cool hiding spot where you can just get away from all of the other players. As you can see, there's just like random little pyramids and stuff everywhere. And this is pretty much the very end of the box. Like you can't really go much further than this. If we zoom out, uh, let me try shift lock here. All right, there we go. So as you can see, these are the caves. There we go. These are the caves. And we are just inside of the caves, but at the very top. Now, the only place that you can go here that's pretty cool is if you come back towards the Stellar Cave. Okay, let me get Exotic on so you guys can see better. So if you come back towards the Stellar Cave, there's like this little lip here. And there should be a hole in the ground. There it is. Now, if you go through this hole in the ground and fall all the way down here. Look at this. Okay, let's zoom out. Look how epic this is. So that's the bridge over there. You can see those are the stairs. This is inside the cave right here. And you're just in a little hole in the ceiling. Honestly, this bit's so epic. I actually love it. So that's a trick that you can use with the chromatic genesis where you can jump higher and just explore that whole area for yourself but there is actually one more trick inside of the stellar cave so let's go back up there all right for this next trick you are going to have to be bald you can't be wearing any hats or hair i know this looks cursed okay don't look at me i'm ashamed i'm only doing it to show you this trick but anyway so what you want to do is come up to the stellar cave so we're back again once again here 
And you want to walk towards this eye. So that is the XYZ eye. And if you stand around here... Wait, there we go. I think I got it. <laughs> Look at this. So if you stand next to this eye, I don't even know how it works. I think you just have to stand around it for a little while. And eventually, these horns will just pop onto your head. But you have to be bald in order for it to happen. I have no idea why this Easter egg is in the game. Like, literally no clue. But there you go. <laughs> You can end up looking like me if you just come stand at this area whilst being bald. But anyway, I've got to get my hair back on and let's move on to the next trick. Ah, there we go. That's much better. You don't have to look at my horrendous bald head any longer. So for the next trick, what you're going to need is a Twilight Iridescent Memory. If you have one of these, you can do something pretty cool with it. So if you equip Twilight Iridescent Memory, you can see that there is this kind of cube at the top that's spinning around. And with it, there's these kind of like lines that come off it as well. But you can actually mess this aura up pretty badly. So if we go over here, what you want to do is come to this corner right here and then just keep jumping up and down. You can see I'm going to start to vibrate and eventually I get launched out sideways a little bit. And look at this cube now. Look how it's spinning around. And you can actually keep repeating this to make it even crazier. So let's try it again. Okay, there we go. <laughs> look at it go. That looks insane. All right, let's do it one more time. Let's see how flat we can get it. Okay, I don't think that actually made it more flat. I think that actually brought it back up a little bit. Okay, that definitely made it more flat. Whoa, look at it go. That looks insane. I want to see if I can get it even worse though. All right, I think this is about as bad as I can get it. Maybe I can get it worse. Let's try it one more time. Sometimes it like resets itself. You see how it reset itself there? So you can just keep messing about with it and just see how much you can kind of break this aura. Okay, I mean, that will do. That is pretty bad. <laughs> So that trick is really easy to do and you can just go into public servers and flex some people because your Twilight Iridescent memory will definitely look different than theirs. Look at this. And now finally, it's time to move on to the very last trick of the day. Now this one is honestly super easy to do. It's just a cool little feature in the map. So if you go towards the obby right here, now obviously, as we all know, you cannot jump into this water. If you jump into here, you will get reset back over here. But there is one area that you can actually jump down onto and it's just really funny to troll your friends with. So if I zoom out quickly, okay, if I just zoom in on this bit here, there is a little stud there and we can actually jump onto that to be underwater. So what you want to do is aim for that bit right there where my mouse is and just simply land on there. What I normally do is just jump from about here. Okay, I missed it that time. <laughs> All right, so what you want to do is just jump from about here. And yeah, you should be able to land on this. It might take you a few tries, but it is doable. And once you're on this little stick here, you can basically just chill underwater and troll your friends, play some hide and seek, anything like that. What I personally love to do is to then go ahead and equip my watermelon aura. And it just looks absolutely ridiculous. You look like a watermelon growing under the water. <laughs> look at this, dude. And I have just turned it into the hell biome. So let's see what it looks like when it's the hell biome and you're under here. Yeah, okay, you're pretty much invisible. Like, if I go back to Glock, I'm in Glock Aura now. You can see down here, we can see everything. But to anyone up here, oof. Yeah, they are going to have a very hard time finding me, especially if we're playing hide and seek. By the way, that concludes all of the tricks and glitches that are still in Souls RNG to this day. Try them out for yourself and let me know in the comments which one is your favorite to use and which one will you be showing to your friends. As always, subscribe to get that batch of luck for yourself. And of course, you'll never miss a video again that way. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next video.